Hey, listen, what happened to uh, Heron's to up uh, Heron's Toward? I sw- see I'm dyslexic, I think, too. I mixed the letters up. What happened to Terrence Howard? Okay, we thought this guy, listen, he was on, we loved him. We loved him. Hustle and flow, the movies, Empire, the acting, the career, the awards, the nominations. It, it, and, it, and then at some point, at some point, the graph just shot straight to the bottom and the, and the stock crashed and he stopped acting to do, I guess, some research. And at this point in time, I guess it's been, I guess it's been since 2017, 2018, early days pre COVID. So we can't even blame that. He, Terrence Howard has taken it upon himself to attempt to rewrite history in the sense of everything that we know about mathematics, the solar system, gravity, straight lines, shapes, trigonometry, everything that they've taught us, everything that Neil deGrasse Tyson has said, everything that science and Isaac and Newton and everything, everything that has been brought to our attention up until this point in time, Terrence Howard is now claiming is theoretically not correct and we need to be over here with him on this trajectory paying attention. Now, for those of you who don't know and are just being introduced to this thanks to the Joe Rogan experience, what you need to know is that he's not only been up to this for the last few years, he's coined and defined a term for it. It's called teriology. It's not Scientology. It's not, it's not biology. It's not geology. It's not trigonometry. It's teriology. It's not Leviology, it's not Joeology, it's called Teriology, and he it's just his definition, and it's this whole basis surrounded around the flower of life and how he's opened it and how he's discovered what no one else before him was able to discover and how the flower of life, and they discovered it, it's in buildings and it's this thing and it's not open. I mean, listen, just listen to how insane... Just listen to how insane he sounds about it, because it's it's fun. It's fun. Now, the flower of life, it's very, very old. The concept is very old. What was the origin of the concept? It's the oldest symbol known to mankind. It's believed that it was Anki, the brother of Enlil. That's right. If you go by the Emerald Sumerian text. text. Yeah, the Sumerian text. Why don't Mm -hmm. you just take the pieces that make up the flower and put them together based on universal ratios? So Mm -hmm. this is the juxtapose of the mistake they made. I took Big four word. of those triangles and wow. And you can scroll around. This is what happens when four bubbles meet. This is the negative space where they can't touch each other. Mm-hmm. This is hydrogen. And as I was saying, electricity is always trying to get to the center of that triangle, but it gets pushed out. And now you see it has four contractive poles which is the right. electric pose. It has mm-hmm. four contractive poles because electricity yep. is seeking a higher pressure condition and forcing it in, where That's magnetism right. is seeking a lower pressure condition and spun out. So the vortices, those tips, that's the magnetic field. That's where they begin. But it has an equal attractor and an equal amount of repulsion. So if you go to what happens when eight bubbles me, they gave me the patents to that. I called that the Tetrian. This is oh, so this go. We is got the negative ba- space in between eight bubbles. Eight bubbles. This is a negative space where eight bubbles meet, and uh. you can scroll around. And this is ignored when they're concentrating on straight lines. Completely, because this, if you look from the top, I haven't violated anything. It fits perfectly inside of there. This is the negative space where eight bubbles meet, but you'll notice it has eight contractive poles, but it only has six magnetic poles, six vortices, so it has a greater electrical potential than uh-huh. a repulsion. So maybe this yep. is the strong nuclear force, and right. the previous one was the weak nuclear force. I called yes. this the Huntian after my son. So I was uh-huh. like, what happens when six bubbles meet? Now you right. see that it has these huge 
bubbles, fast moving, but there's six strong spheres that's going around this, but the greater attractor has grabbed the two weaker attractors. And this looks just like a photon, and guess what? It has 30 poles. This oh. looks like what happens in nature. So I was like, okay, so they gave me the patents to this, but you'll see that there's we six got all the patents. electrical poles to it. So I was like, what happens when 12 bubbles meet another stable structure oh, that my we Lord. basically see in nature, but there's four unaccounted electrical poles to it. Four spin around it. You can count those four. You'll see one at the bottom and three on those sides. This is uh -huh. the basis of crystallization, the laws of crystallization. That form. Uh -huh. And I was like, what happens when 24 bubbles meet? This is the negative space. If you pull to a horizontal on it, this yep. is a negative space where 24 bubbles meet. This is where you cannot distinguish this from the background because all of the electrical potential has been accounted for. Yep. This would uh -huh. be the Bose-Einstein condensate where uh -huh. something becomes indistinguishable from the fabric of space itself the final state of matter. And the proof of this, the platonic solids, uh -huh. they have a thing called discrete symmetry. You can put the cubes together, uh -huh. maybe you can put the dodecahedrons together, but you can't put all of them together. Uh -huh. But you can take the wave conjugations right yep. here and they form super symmetrical systems. Where it's a super symmetrical system and we're just living in it. And so thanks to Terrence Howard, he's got all these shapes patent, and basically we've got the keys to the universe. He went on Joe Rogan's podcast. It was a three-hour episode. Joe Rogan talked for 13 minutes. When's the last time we've seen and allowed Joe Rogan to only speak for 13 minutes out of three hours, dude? I'm pretty sure that's accurate. We're going to double check that, but that's all the episode was, man. It was just big word after big word, and there's nothing else that anyone on this planet can do other than go, yeah, uh-huh, yep, yep, okay. And just understand that this man is, I don't know if he cracked I don't know. Some people I talked to might have mentioned drugs. I don't know if 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 Hollywood broke him. If it was a call, I don't know what is going on here. But it was three hours of lunacy, of complete. We started the episode with 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 I think Joe asking him what his earliest memory was, and now for ninety nine point nine 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 percent, here's my scientific analytic, you know, whatever opinions. Here's is 999% of all human beings would say, I don't know, when I bumped my knee, I was three, or I sang a song when I was three or four or two or five or six. Terrence Howard's first memory was being in his mother's womb when she was pregnant with him at about six months old. He would look at his hands and be like, all right, this is my hand. And then, oh, and then he would be like, okay, I got to go to sleep. And then he'd wake up and he'd be in this jelly blob. And then he said he remembers the birth and coming out of the canal. And then he saw a light and then he was born. And like he remembers the entire embryo experience. And his proof for this was putting a light and, and playing a song. He put a light and he played, uh, he played my humps by, um, by, uh, that one by, uh, black eyed peas. And he would play my humps, my hump, my hump, my hump, my lovely lady lumps and put a, a light on his wife's belly. And then every day he did that at two o'clock. And then one day on a Friday after eight days, he didn't do it. And then the baby pushed up on the belly because he was looking for the light and the black eyed peas. And so Terrence Howard thinks that he remembers and he knows all this because when he was f three years old, he had a dream and the dream was basically this guy and he took his hand and he asked him, he was like, what do you want? And Terrence Howard was like, I want to know everything. And the guy was like, okay, your wish is my command. Here's a castle. And you can go inside this mansion, this castle, this big mansion. And it's got all the answers in it. And he says every night in his dreams, he goes to the mansion and he gets a new answer. And then he knows how to bring together the flower of life with the negative space into the carbon neutralized ions that the particles from the flower of life, when you bend it at a 90 degree angle, create to basically give us all of the answers to the universe. And Neil deGrasse Tyson can suck my dick. And basically... 
That was the premise of the entire episode. I mean, it didn't stop. Just when you thought you you kind of sort of got a grasp on what he's talking about, then we start talking about this shit. And that asteroid belt that we have right now mm -hmm. between Mars and Jupiter, that used to be a planet. And I believe that they had humanoids that developed on there. I believe that Cirrus used to be a planet when it was here and the humanoids on there didn't recognize that we don't have a solid core. Everything expands as a sphere and no sphere in our universe, no bubble has a solid core. We're perceiving it as a solid core, but there's not a solid right. core there. Here we there's go. just a bubble. And at CERN, that mm -hmm. Hydron Collider, that particle accelerator, I believe they did the same thing and they popped <gasps> the planet. And it became that asteroid belt. Really? Just take it. If you add up all of the weight of the mass of those of, so of what the asteroids <laughs> in the asteroid belt, it will probably equal the same mass as that. So of now what he's claiming is that is that what science and, and history and data has shown us is that the core of the planet Earth is hot and magnum magma and like a solid kind of steel foundation like stuff we can't really even get into because of how gnarly it is. Right. And so what he's claiming is that it's not, it's hollow and it's just a bubble and it's a bubble of gas. And if we pop it, we're going to pop the planet like a bubble. Terrence Howard is claiming that our planet is a bubble. And if we turn on a particle accelerator or drill too deep into it, the bubble's going to pop. And then our planet too is going to become an asteroid belt. And so the asteroid belt that is it within the Milky Way galaxy, if you take all those comments and you, you put them on a scale, it's going to equal that of Mars. And that's where the humans were. And they, they pop their bubble and we haven't popped ours yet. So if we pop the bubble, then we're going to become basically space dust. And so hopefully we don't do that. You know what I mean? Hopefully we don't do that. So thank God Terrence Howard saved us from the bubble pop, you know, it's kind of one of those, it's one of those things. And there's more, there's so much more. It's like, it, you can't. In all places of the universe have figured this out already. If they're traveling here, they have, because you don't use power to go from one place to another. You decouple from oh, the electric pool. The big you words. decouple from the earth, and guess what? The earth pulls away from you at its speed. You decouple, decouple. from the solar system, it pulls away at its, this is what at we're its talking speed. About. You decouple from the galaxy, it pulls away from you. That's all you really need to do, but they didn't know how to decouple. In two years, I won't need props anymore. I'll use molecular excitation, which is all inside of the patents that I've put in there. So the one of the things about this what? whole back engineering... What the fuck? What did he just say? I won't need props anymore. I'll use molecular accelerate. What do we? Oh my God. What's happening? Like, why are we entertaining this? Is gravity propulsion systems. Is that there's a system. This is what Bob Lazar talked about. There's mm -hmm. a system that uses a stable element. Here we go. We got to bring up Bob Lazar. Every time, every time Joe Rogan brings up Bob Lazar, someone writes him a check for two hundred thousand dollars. It's in his contract, Spotify. It's in. If you read the fine print of the whole agreement, every time Joe Rogan brings up Bob Lazar, he gets a check. They just drop a new Tesla off at his house or a new studio or something or whatever. Something that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, he'll get in the next twenty four hours. Now that he's mentioned Bob Lazar's name. One more time. It's theoretical until they discovered that it actually exists in a particle collider in the 2000s. So he was talking about this in 1989. And what he's saying is that there's some sort of stable element that gets bombarded with electricity and it creates this gravity oh wave. That You can do that or you can just, like with music, use a discordant tone. And those tones will push away. There's a particular tone that the earth is on. There's a particular tone, the key of A. It's 432 okay. hertz. I'm done. Schumann resonance. So instead of, instead of using... All you have to do is have the opposite tone got it. to that, and it will be pushed away from it. You don't... The same way a bubble at the bottom of the ocean doesn't use any energy to get to the top. But because it's completely... <sighs> 
in, in opposition to its environment. The environment Love's pushes bubbles. it away. That's what you do if you're an intelligent race. You can use an oar if you're trying to swim across the ocean. You can get across there. But an intelligent species, like Alan Watts said, will use a sail. And they'll tack. And make their way across. You use the energy. That's what judo is. It's supposed to be the Tao, the Tao way, which is the Wu way. Okay. It's so this is, it's making my brain melt. Every time I watch it, I just watched all these last night and I have like three more, but I'm not even going to play any of them because my brain is melting. Listen, there used to be an era of Joe Rogan that was so fun and entertaining. Like he would have on like the lead ex singer of blink 182 who claimed to have alien bodies in his basement. And like we would have on Alex Jones and all these FBI guys and like the aliens and the Bigfoots and the conspiracies. And it's what made Joe Rogan popular because we could turn it on and we could just melt and we could listen to people like Joey Diaz talk about farting on the bus for three hours and freaking just nonsensical comedic entertainment. And then somewhere along the way, probably the COVID shift, Joe started talking to politicians and Jordan Peterson and all these other people that then we automatically had to start taking seriously. We had to forget everything we knew about the fart jokes and all that stuff. And obviously he still has those people on, but it's extremely hard now to listen to when you can see Joe Rogan fully invested in this conversation with Terrence Howard, even though he himself, I highly doubt, even though he said otherwise on Instagram and his statement, whatever, I just can't formally believe that Joe Rogan believes anything Terrence is saying. It's been proven incorrect. Most of it, I get that some of it is science, but half of what he's saying in the sense of the word isn't correct. Terrence Howard's biggest claim to fame, there's a whole 20 minute, 30 minute video on it that he explains in a speech, keynote, whatever, is that one times one equals two. And that them teaching us this mathematic equation, multiplication, the school system, everything has failed us. To teach us that one times one equals one is false, the most heinous claim, and he is dying on the hill. He talks about it with Joe. He talks about it in other interviews. Terrence Howard believes that one times one equals two, and he goes on a huge rant to prove it, to disprove it, but the easiest the easiest explanation I can give you to just counterprove him, and we all know I'm not smart, okay? When it comes to math, I got nowhere close to trigonometry, okay? I got nowhere close to algebra two. I got nowhere close to any of that in college. I was in a web design. It just it didn't work out for me in the math class to the point where I'm pretty sure they invented a senior math class out of nowhere just for me. They looked at me, they put me in trigonometry too, and the teacher looked at me and was like, you're not, Levi, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be in this class. I know, you know. I left 20 minutes in, I went to the kitchen, I baked some cookies, we figured it out in a few days, and then I was in senior math dash probability. And so they created, they said, all right, this kid, he's going out on his lunch break buying the fucking math teacher a Snuggie, He's got, he's playing with decks of cards, doing magic tricks all goddamn day long. What can we do? And one of the teachers who were pretty sure was smoking pot with all the kids behind the school before and after during, he was definitely high during this class. They created senior math probability. And Mr. Adams came in on the first day and said, folks, here's a deck of cards. Each of them has a different face on it. There's 52 figure out how many combinations there are by the end of the class in four weeks and you pass. And if you don't, you still pass, figure it out. It's called probability. Here you go. And he went off and played solitaire for the next eight weeks. And we all pissed off and did literally whatever we wanted. So when it comes to math, I'm not really there at that book smart of a level. But what I do know is Terrence Howard, one times one equals one. 
Let's figure out how many Funko Pops we have. If we have one box with one Funko Pop in it, we have one Funko Pop. One box with one Funko Pop in it equals one Funko Pop. Now, if we have two boxes, let's look at two times two. Two boxes and each box has two Funko Pops in it, two times two equals four Funko Pops. That's math, it's in front of you, it's right there. You cannot tell me that if you have one box with one Funko Pop in it, you somehow miraculously have two Funko Pops, Terrence Howard. Where does the other Funko Pop come from? One times one equals one. There's one Funko Pop in the box. If we have two boxes, say there's three Funko Pops in each of our boxes. That means three times two equals six because we have six Funko Pops in total, Terrence Howard. So if I can understand that, I'm just not entirely sure how Joe Rogan and his infinite wisdom of a $250 million podcast deal can't really wrap his head around the fact that Terrence Howard just might be a little bit mm, mentally unstable. He might have cracked. He may or may not have cracked. I mean, it just... So you have a son, and how does the sun give birth to these planets? The same way we defecate and have gas. We like fart them out. Jupiter. We fart them out. The sun farts, and boop, we got Jupiter. The sun ate a beam beam burrito. Boop, now we got Mars. The sun had some bad sushi from 7-Eleven, had a little gas bubble circulate a little bit. Boop, now we got Venus. The sun farts out the planets. I think that's what he said. If I'm understanding... It's, am I not on the same level here? What's going on? Birth to these planets. The same way we defecate and have gas. Like Jupiter's, that 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 red spot on Jupiter, mm -hmm. that's spinning uh -huh. on it, that's mm -hmm. going to become a moon. Uh -huh. It may take a, a billion or two billion years. That will ultimately uh -huh. become a moon off of yep. Jupiter. Where is it? Right yep. at the equator. Where yep. do we discharge it? Yep. Right at our equator. Yep. Right at our equator. And... Yep. Then it will rotate its way around and slowly be pushed out okay. by the solar wind of, of well, by Jupiter. So like coronal field. mass ejections. Coronal mass ejections. So some kind of ejection of... Coronal ma mass ejections. The, the coronal mass ejections. This, what don't you understand, people? If, if you don't listen, I get it. If you don't understand what's going on, turn off the pod. It's too complicated, but with what... You need to wrap your head around is that for the next five to six hundred episodes, this is how we're going to be speaking. We are now on another level educationally because of Terrence Howard. So if you don't fully understand coronal mass ejections, like it's you know, hey, I, I, I you know, it's fine. I get it. I get it. But you know, maybe go, I don't know, go watch like a, a Mr. Beast video or something and just kind of. Sink into the couch and, and you know, let let the rest of us run the world because clearly we've we're on a different wavelength now. So some kind of ejection of matter leaves the sun and over billions and billions of years enough of it collects and there's enough of a force to where ultimately that coalescing idea that they have those are, that's where it happens. It's not from materials that's just been left over uh. from the Big Bang. You know, like Rupert Sheldrick says, you know, the physicists of today ask for, you give us one miracle yeah. and, you know, show yeah. us how everything came from nothing and we'll explain everything else. And they can't explain uh. everything else. They can't un explain the morphic resonance that's morphic. happening between things like morphic right resonance. now, because I've discovered these Thank God for him. every person on the planet that's been thinking about it will now have ideas concerning but not just us but all humanoids throughout the entire universe will now get that same resonance and be able to apply it like the experiments we with need the rats the rat. oh god now we're talking about rats 
We need this man as president. I don't know why he's not on the ballot. If Terrence Howard was on the ballot, I'd vote. Let's let's get him running. What's the next election? 2028, Lubav? Let's get Terrence Howard on the ballot for 2028 because if, if there's someone who can change the world, can you imagine what would happen if the minds of Elon Musk and Terrence Howard got together? I think with the 97 patents Terrence Howard has and the power of SpaceX and Tesla and X and and everything that Elon Musk, oh man, we're talking about a game changer. I'm thinking... Terrence Howard for president, okay, vice president, Elon Musk. It's got a ring to it, and I kind of like it, and I think we need to make it happen. And if, if Joe Rogan can make the connect, we can have Joe Rogan as Speaker of the House. Anytime he's got to make an announcement for the White House, Terrence can just text him, and then Joe can get on the pod and be like, hey, national update, everyone pay attention. Uh, president Howard says... We're good to go for another 600 million years. We have enough energy and enough power on the grid to supply human life for 600 million more years. Just so you all know, thank you. Love and peace. Stay safe, America. It's great again. Joe Rogan. And then he goes into a three-hour conversation with uh, Tim Dillon and Eddie Bravo. It's a good day to be an American. 